Welcome to the Growing in Grace podcast, where you can listen in on some casual conversation about the good news of Jesus without all of the inconsistent religious double talk. If you've ever struggled with feelings of hopelessness, guilt, and despair, or wondered if you're really right with God, it's time to discover the true freedom that comes with the gospel of unlimited and overflowing grace. The Growing in Grace podcast. Howdy, howdy, ho. I'm the Cap. That's the Breeze Man there. I'm glad you're with us for another episode. Growingingrace.org, our flagship website. And um, Joel, hope you had a good week. What's going on with you? Yeah, well, I was going to say I'm pretty excited because by the time that this thing gets posted, it will have been several weeks ago, but I was pretty excited because I got to enjoy some uh, really good fish and chips this past week. <laughs> <laughs> and that makes my life so exciting. You know, if that tells you anything about my life and the excitement that I experience. But, um, well, as a boy, I lived in England and I got to have the, I hated fish. I mean, I would never, ever, ever have eaten fish in my life. And then we went to a, a genuine British fish and chips shop and I smelled it and I was like, oh, it smells good. And I looked at it and I tried some and it was just the absolute best thing I've ever had. Fish and chips with vinegar and tartar sauce that I just loved it. And I've been hooked on the genuine British fish and chips ever since. And of course, over here in the States, it's hard to find. And then finally, so I didn't actually have some genuine fish and chips the other day, but a uh, a truck came by that travels the area and they had some Alaskan cod um, fish and chips. And it was good. It was really, really good. And... That's my story I'm sticking to. It has nothing to do with anything <laughs> on this podcast, but it was exciting for me. And I just had to share that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so when you say chips, yes. what, what do you mean? Uh, here in America, we call them French fries. <laughs> yeah, okay. But what was it in England? French fries. But they okay. call them chips. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing. It's that another big thing. I could go on for hours about this. You know, I talked about how I can go on and on if, a week or two ago. I can go on and on about stuff if I enjoy talking about it. And the differences between the words that people in England use versus the words we use in America, I could go on and on about that because it's fun. Like the, the trunk of a car that we call here in England, it's, it's the boot. Mm -hmm. And the hood is the bonnet. <laughs> and uh, uh, chips, what we call chips here, potato chips, they call crisps. And then what we call French fries here, which has nothing to do with France, they call them chips. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Like I said, I could go on and on, but that's not really our Well, I, I do like fish here. and chips. Um, <laughs> I, I've ate them in different forms. Probably not like what you had in England, but, uh, I, you know, I like them. And... Uh, uh, even back in my younger days, uh, Long John Silvers. Oh yeah, Long John Silvers. Is, yeah, well, I mean, is good. I, you know, when you're younger, you can get away with it. But yeah. if I were to do that now, I'd probably have to have an ambulance yeah, following when, me around. When I, don't I know. <laughs> when the last time I had Long John Silvers, I was like, I was so miserable afterwards. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean, it was so good at the time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's the wages of sin, man. It's the no. I'm just kidding. But, well, um, you know, Jesus, after he rose, he came walking through the wall and wanted some fish some and fish. chips, right? That's right, fish and chips. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe not the chips. No, I know they fried them, but probably not the deep fried beer batter <laughs> that we have these days. It was probably a healthier version. <laughs> you think? <laughs> Well, and, and did it need to be a healthier version with a resurrected body? That that's a subject yeah, for really. another podcast. He was going to live forever, so yeah, <laughs> you can eat whatever <laughs> you want. <laughs> oh, now now that to me is heaven. Yeah, really. Who cares about cholesterol and and uh, clogged arteries when you can you're going to live forever? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hmm. Time to get on with stuff here. I yes, guess. Let's, let's do that. Joel, uh, I'm not, there's, I know where we want to go with this. So let's figure out how we're going to start this. Let, let me let me start here. And, and this is just one verse. We could certainly get a lot more context here, which would be very beneficial. But one verse from uh, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21, the last verse of the chapter. For he, Jesus, or God, made him, Jesus, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, 
that we might become the righteousness of God in him. We were talking a few minutes ago. This is this is one of those verses. That's, you know, it's a Bible verse that's just packed. Mm-hmm. It's like a great song lyric, <laughs> you know, that you, you maybe you write once in a lifetime. And and Paul hit a lot here. Now, granted, uh, many things were said before this that led him to, to saying this, but Jesus, who had never done anything wrong, was made sin for us, that we, who have never done anything right, might become the righteousness of God in him. And we find out in chronological order in the Bible, uh, New Testament-wise, in in Romans, uh, the first few chapters of Romans, where where Paul begins to reveal what the gospel is. And what it is, is a, a revelation of righteousness, not through what we do, but through what Jesus did. It is the gift of, of righteousness. And within this package of redemption and salvation and, and righteousness comes holiness and sanctification and perfection and forgiveness and cleansing and all of these things that are already now ours in him. So sometimes people get tripped up because I just read a single Bible verse. I expounded on it a little bit over the last minute, but Sometimes religious people get tripped up, hung up, uh, tangled up within a single Bible verse that doesn't seem like it's such good news. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to look at one of those in First Peter chapter 1. Let me give you two verses just to, to help out here. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct because it is written And when he says it is written, by the way, he's referring to something that was written in the Old Testament, generally written to Israel, because it is written, be holy, for I am holy. So basically, one Bible verse there, it is written, be holy, for I am holy. So Joel, where where do we go with this? Because I'm sure you've had people approach you on it. I know I have. This is telling me I better start doing everything right again. Yeah, you'd better darn well change your behavior or else. You know, isn't that what Peter's saying? <laughs> I mean, that's really, that's how it has been preached. I've heard it that way, you know, in, in a past church setting that I used to be in. You know, without any context, without looking at anything else, um, you darn well better be holy because God is holy. And he expects you to be holy. And some would even preach it to the point of if you're not, if you don't behave holy in your conduct, then you have no salvation. You've, you don't, you're not righteous. Uh, you have to work to be holy. It's basically what people will preach this as. I've heard it, and I and people do bring this up, like when we're talking about being righteous, that we've been made righteous apart from our works. People will bring this up. Well, Peter says here, uh, be holy for I am holy. You know, for the, you know, the Lord says, be holy for I am holy. And then make it into a, a works thing, a works salvation thing. Like you were saying, Paul in Romans is really good, pl- you know, place to go to establish um, that we have been made righteous, we've been made holy, we've been sanctified, we've been justified as God's gift. You know, in in Romans three, up to up to a certain point in Romans three, he's he's leading up to a point, and his point f- he gets to finally is, but now the righteousness of God apart from the law, apart from works, is revealed, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus. Christ. It's it's a, it's a gift. Uh, he's, he talks about all, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So everybody has been unholy in their conduct. Everyone has sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But, you know, the point is being justified freely by his grace and through the, re, uh, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. It's a gift. And if you go to the next chapter in Romans 4, Paul talks about how Abraham was justified by faith. And that's the same way that we're justified is, is when we believe it's by faith. And in Romans 5, for if, the one, if by the one man's offense death reigned through the one, how much more those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. So righteousness is a gift. Holiness is a gift. Being sanctified, all of these things are something that we have received as a gift. And so when somebody out of, just out of the blue says, brings up this verse from Peter, like what you're talking about, but he, as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in your, all your conduct, because it is written, be holy for I am holy. Uh, the way that I look at that is that I've already been made holy. I've already been made righteous. And so... I'm being encouraged by Peter here to live that way, 
uh, that that is reflected in in my conduct. It's not to to me. This is a one of the behavior verses, and there are a lot of behavior verses in the scriptures, but the behavior passages aren't about salvation. If you don't do this, then you're not saved. It's you already are righteous. You already are justified. And let that reflect in the way that you live your life. To me, that's what that's saying here. Because like you were pointing out in Second Corinthians, Jesus didn't know any sin. He had never sinned, never done anything wrong, and he became sin. And in the same way, we had never done anything good. Because another thing in Romans that Paul brings out is that there is no nobody good, no one who does good. There is no one righteous. There is no one who seeks after God. This is, of course, all apart from this gift of righteousness that we believe. So we, who had never done any good, became the righteousness of God. <laughs> and it was all as, as a gift. So I think it's uh, putting the, the cart and the horse in the right order uh, when I look at that. Yeah, because it is a curious thing for me to see Peter slip this in. It's like one of these sandwich verses, uh, even though I, I've read two verses, they're short ones. And and to me, there's an, there is an element of inconsistency here, because listen to what Peter says before and after this. Hmm. <laughs> it's pretty good stuff. I mean, he's writing to people saying, we, we have an abundance of mercy, uh, verse 3. Uh, And I'll I'll just read some of the the highlights here of what he says leading up to this. We've been begotten a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. It's an inheritance which is incorruptible, which means imperishable. It's undefiled. It doesn't fade away. It's reserved for you in heaven. Um, We're kept by the power of God through faith for salvation. And you greatly rejoice in this, even though you've gone through various trials. Um, I'm hitting the headlines here to stay mm-hmm. with me. Salvation of your souls. Uh, the prophets talked about this thing. This would be what was prophesied, that this grace that they talked about, that they weren't able to apprehend, it came to you. This grace came to you. And, and so there's some great stuff here. That, that And then Peter you know, gets to this point where you need to be obedient. Uh, throw away your former lust. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. <laughs> who's, who's done that? <laughs> in other words, if you're not holy in all of your conduct, then you're not holy. And that is a true statement. So maybe, maybe I don't even know if Peter knew what he was saying here when, when, when I'm going to say what I'm about to say. But you can't be holy based upon what you do. Right. You're holy based upon the work of Christ, and because you're holy with this inheritance, um, now you can reflect this. We talked about reflecting light last week. Now you can reflect this holiness that abides in you, but you're not holy because of what you do. That was the whole point of the law, because what Peter quotes here, be holy for I am holy, this is quoted over and over and over again in the books of the law. Leviticus is a big one, Mm -hmm. over and over and over again, and all of it is in the context of you need to do this, this, and this from the law. And then he would throw that in there, be holy, for I am holy, and now you need to do this, this, and this. And so it's just kind of a curious thing to slip in there because uh, Peter would go on, and, and, and then he throws this in there. If you call on the Father who, without partiality, judges according to each one's work, Conduct yourselves throughout uh, the time of your stay here in fear. Um, so, But then he goes on to say this, grace people, you'll get this, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold or your aimless conduct. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting confused here. Uh, received by the tradition of your fathers, which was the law, uh, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. He was raised from the dead and gave, uh, gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. And I would add to that that your faith and hope are in God and not in your uh, own abilities, your own works. So maybe we've misunderstood. This is the problem, though, sometimes when you just pluck a verse or two out, 
and think we're, we, we've got to be holy based upon what we do. It contradicts so many other things that are written in the New Testament, especially by the Apostle Paul, mm -hmm. if that's the way we were to interpret it. Right, yeah, if that's the way we we were to interpret it. And I, you know, Peter even goes on uh, with more good stuff, like uh, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible <laughs> through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. So there is a case being made right there that our new birth in Christ, it's incorruptible. There's no way that it can be corrupted. It's good. I mean, we're secure. We're safe in him. So I guess, you know, again, it, I would go back to if, if I'm going to take what Peter said there in the context of everything else he says there I take it as an exhortation but I can see how what wh you're coming from what you're saying that it does seem a little inconsistent that uh, because being holy you're either holy or you're not because the word holy means to be set apart so you're either holy or you're not and in Christ we are holy so if anything else I would just say that yeah let it reflect in what you do but it's uh, it's interesting. You're right. It's interesting how he throws that in. In the middle, like you say, kind of a sandwich there, in the middle of everything else he says, it seems a little odd. Well, if he really meant uh, that you've got to be holy, <laughs> you are holy. You you be holy because you're in Christ, right? That's the way we, we see it, by grace. But if, if you're trying to be holy based upon what you do, he even contradicted that by the things he said before and after that, mm -hmm. which was really that it's it's by Christ. It's by his blood. It's by him having been raised from the dead. And he wraps up the chapter, Joel, I know we're wrapping up here ourselves, but he, he goes on to say that, as you said, born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible. And then he quotes another Old Testament passage, all flesh is his grass, uh, all the glory of man is the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls away or fades, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And some people will say, well, see the entire Bible. Uh, this isn't talking about the Bible. Right, the no. word of the Lord, the, the, the word of the Lord is is what God had spoken through Christ. And and uh, and, and by the way, the, the, the word of the Lord is, is something that continues on. God hasn't stopped speaking. <laughs> And that's why yeah. we've been given his spirit. Well, Hebrews says today he speaks to us through his son. Uh, so, yeah, it's 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 interesting. So God does still speak. Uh, and then, then he, he ends that chapter, at least what we know is a chapter. Now, this is the word by which the gospel was preached to you. So he is speaking about a specific thing there. So... I don't know uh, how a person will take what we're talking about here, but the I think the the highlights for me is that we are we are righteous and we are holy. We're never not holy because God has made us holy. <laughs> the word yeah, holy it's means gifted to us. Yeah, that, it's a the gift. Good news on yeah, he, he has set us apart, and we, he's he's made us all of these things by a gift, by nothing that we've ever done. We can't add to it. We can't take away from it. We can't make ourselves righteous, holy, sanctified, and we can't do anything to make it not so. And, and, and realize, realizing that you are holy, as we said earlier, will, will help reflect this in, in your lifestyle and in your conduct. Doesn't mean you'll do it perfectly, right? But you, but it does mean that you, you've still been perfected in Him. It, it's all based upon Him, and, and uh, so it is a good encouragement for people to, to reflect this light, to reflect this in our conduct. Absolutely. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. Access past programs by visiting growingingrace.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.